Okay, so we're back to the turn where we, uh, the final battle with Mu is right here. That's not the true ending. And I didn't know that actually was uh, possible to get an ending like that. <laughs> because, first of all, we haven't done our, uh, we haven't count conquered Babylon at all. So this is our problem here. We're going to end our turn. We're going to just go ahead and tank all the attacks from uh, the Illuminati. Because this is not the end. <laughs> that video, man. Just like, what the fuck? Alright, so. Um. Fuck. Just deploy people. Why not, right? But yeah. That wasn't the final. That wasn't the final battle. <laughs> Trust me, it's not. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to obviously restart the fucking uh, save file and uh, wait until we complete all the uh, events with Babylon and whatnot. Because we need to conquer Babylon or to apparently we need to uh, conquer Babylon or to uh, unlock the second phase of the uh, last, you know, the find the end game, so to speak. So let's go ahead and do just that. Wow, that unit actually survived with 10. <laughs> okay. Now that that's done. They might actually attack multiple times, now that I think about it. Nope, never mind. Okay, so we get a pre-turn event. So Hammerai comes, comes to visit Japan. So she explains how um, Babylon is the only reason for Babylon's existence in this game is to protect two very legendary heroes. Their names are Enkidu and Gilgamesh. Yes, Gilgamesh. So that's why uh, Hammurabi and her, you know, nation of um, Babylon never attacks anyone. They're only there to protect Enkidu and Gilgamesh, even though they don't really need protecting, as you'll later, see, as you'll see later on. But yeah. Technically speaking, Hammurabi says that, or she implies that Babylon is the strongest faction in the world, which I tend to believe, um, if it weren't for, you know, their whole, oh, you know, self-defense policy. Um, it's kind of like uh, Britannia in that sense, before, you know, before you actually get so po so powerful and whatnot, you go invade in England or whatever. So, um, Babylon, she explains that Babylon is just a gate. Makes sense. And we conquer Babylon just by talking to them! Really trippy. And in addition, um, who is it? Hammurabi actually joins us. So her character, we start in her character events. Himiko is obviously getting pissed off. Okay, so let's see, take a look at, uh, Hammurabi. So she's right here. She doesn't start, start with much, um... I mean, she's not a she's not like a fantastic commander or anything, to be honest. It's like she's just there. She is useful. Her hero skill doesn't really make much sense. Well, it makes sense to the character, but it's not very good. So I just say that right now. So um, let's go. We have a lot of uh, events here. Hammurabi's character events revolve around Himiko and Chihaya scoring around. And uh, Himiko mainly trying to hold these contests to see, like she says right here, to see who is, who the better wife is. Even though Hammurabi has no intention of the sort. So Hammurabi just thinks that it's just a normal household party, so she's in. <laughs> it's cooking. She likes cooking. Why not? And Himiko's method of... Um, of competing in this contest to see who the better wife is, the better waifu, is to have her friends, uh, you know, cook something for her. Fucking Himiko, man. Wow, okay. Weight minus 30? Okay. Shit, bro. <laughs> that item, because remember how a lot of um, moves that our commanders have that uh, have, like, require wait time? 
Remember that a lot of them have exactly 30 wait time. If we put this item onto on them, then they literally go immediately. Or I think that's how it works. That's that's how it should work, I believe. I could be wrong about that though. So let's go ahead and give um that item to someone who had who uses skills that require wait time. We could even give it to someone who has a hero skill that requires wait time too. Excuse me. Um like say for example Let's see, who like Kamehameha? She her her hero skill requires wait time because it has a weight of fifty. But if we give her the minus thirty items, she only needs to wait twenty, and she can go a lot faster. But I don't know, I don't really use um who is it? Kamehameha's hero skill all that often, so it's not really I wouldn't say it's it's worth it, per se. We could even give it to um who is it? Kanemoto, because you know, we might have to use supercharge. If we give her minus 30, uh, you know, the minus 30 item, she only needs to wait 70 as opposed to waiting 100. In fact, that's what we're gonna do. So, may, uh, weight minus 30. Now, actually, because she has weight minus 10, she can, she actually has weight minus um, 20, uh, 40. And if we give her um, weight minus... Eh, do we want to do that, though? Because uh, K might actually need this weight item. I'll just stick with this. Why not? Okay. So, where were we? That were all their items, though. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get some more money here. Some more monies. They are at, uh, Babylon. Checking out the Hanging Gardens. The world-famous Hanging Gardens. And, of course, Kay being the perfect maid that she is, even though her name's not Sakuya, um brings lunch for everybody. Warrior 20k. Find yeah. out for me. I wonder what this event is. Oh, they're checking out Elysium. Okay. So we couldn't search Elysium because we didn't uh, have Hammurabi. Hammurabi is required for this event. <laughs> Tristan is, uh, is being unlucky as always. Poor Tristan. Final battle with Moon. We are not doing that yet. So here's a uh, Gilgamesh. Battle. So, um, Gilgamesh is a little bit weird in this game. Um, not only does she have the whole, you know, ah, oh, ha, ha, fucking thing, um, she, she, because, you know, obviously according to um, ancient Hammer Up, or ancient Babylonian legend, or uh, uh, Mesopotamian legend, however you want to call it, uh, Gilgamesh was, you know, collected a lot of treasure, whatever, I'm not an expert in that, but I know she collected a lot of shit. And uh, in this game, the game portrays her as like a really messy kind of person. Um, yeah. Really weird. This is Enkidu. Um, she, technically she is naked. Um, it's the same deal with Ashoka. But hey, at least it's not as as uh, as apparent. You just glance at her, and you don't really notice that she is. But if you take a look at it and look closer, then yeah, you can probably see everything. So we're gonna skip it. So Enkidu tries to send a letter uh, to um, who is it? Hammurabi. Except she can't write very well. So, yeah, six for her, right? Okay, missions. So, a uh, good thing about Babel, or ba Babylon, the rest of Babylon, is that they they declare war you right away after you after Babylon joins you. So we don't even have to worry about declaring war on them, which is nice. So let's go ahead and do we need it. <laughs> we don't need any okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, invade her right away. So, we fight, uh, who is this? Enkidu first, at Uruk. So, Enkidu is a legendary hero, and she attacks you by herself. Normally, this would be a very, um, I think they intended this to be a very challenging fight, because obviously she's by herself, and she's got on a luck plus four, no, luck plus three terrain square. Except, considering all our units have at least 5,000 troops, this is actually not that hard. We'll just put... 
Oda Nobunaga in the front line because fuck it. Who the hell cares? We'll actually put uh, Kamehameha behind her so she has she gets 12 damage, like a boss. And let's see here. We can throw in Hannibal, I suppose. Uh, not Hannibal, I guess. Ivan? Pretty sure. Uh, we'll throw in Lancelot too. Why not? Throw on Yoain and Archimedes. Sure. So again, this was meant to be a hard battle, except we're just going to completely wreck uh, Enkidu. In fact, we're going to wreck her so hard, we only really needed Oda Nobunaga to do it for us. Good. Done. Bam. Game over. Thanks for playing, asshole. So, Enkidu, Hammurabi tries to tell them that we're not actually wanting to fight them, but Enkidu is misunderstanding, and she doesn't want to listen, so, and she, well, she, it's not that she doesn't want to listen, she just jumps to her own conclusion really fast. So she runs away from Uruk, and we capture Uruk, um, and she runs away back to Babel, I think it is, to join Gilgamesh, and we'll, be, we'll have to fight Gilgamesh and um, Enkidu together. Enkidu ruins uh, Gilgamesh's weapon collection. Blah, 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 whatever. And we get to attack Babel next. So here's the thing. Let me show you what happens when we attack Babel. So we, we're going to fight Gilgamesh and Enkidu at the same time. So here's the thing. Let's go ahead and deploy all our best units, right? Arthur... Chihaya, Galahad, Gawain, let's see, Yoshitsune, or Ishikawa Goemon. Eh, it's kind of a waste, um, not using Sasuke Kojiro's steel passive, but we'll just have to deal with it. Um, let's see, Percival maybe? Actually, we're not going to deploy her. Instead, we're going to deploy Percival and Da Vinci? Am I going to get shrek here? No, let's deploy... Fuck, I don't know who to deploy. This is so hard! Vlad Tepes, maybe? I mean, sure, I, I guess, right? Okay, so, um, the thing about this battle... Is that they get then they get a full brave meter right away? <laughs> what? In fact, I think it would have been a better idea for us to actually just go ahead and attack them right away because they're going to all use their fucking um, hero hero skills. Take a look at um, Gilgamesh. She has both. A strong shot, which deals five times damage, it's an archer ability, and she's got Nephilim, which is a hero hero skill, a melee hero skill that I guess it'll hurt uh, Percival and Vlad Tepes the most. But still, like they can use that right away, and plus they'll get the brave back for it too. So this is just really, this is just a bad bad news bears for all of us. We we will probably lose this fight. There is a very big possibility we will not win this on the first try. I mean, just fucking look at that. It deals 4k damage by herself. And that was a crit. Like, holy fucking shit. This will give a lot, uh, give us back a lot of brave, though, because she did end up hitting, um, who is it, Vlad, but it only gave us two, so fuck, man. Well, I guess Shihaya killing, um, who is it, Gilgamesh only shot certainly helps. Um, we will actually go ahead and advance so that all four of them have, uh, that <laughs> super regeneration for the win! <laughs> Bam! Full, full heal. Thank you, based, uh, based full heal. Nephilim, so, Arthur should be able to survive, uh, Galahad will not, clearly. And Percival won't survive this, uh, either. So basically we're down to Arthur... Chaya and um, Galahad. But did I say Galahad wasn't going to survive that? I meant going. Whatever. 
So Chihaya will use Sumigari no Tachi. Nice. So that is, now that he's got a crit, if we didn't get a critical, we probably would have uh, guaranteed lost this. But thankfully, we won. So yeah, <laughs> this is one of the ways where the game really bullshits you. Because there was no way for you to have known that they would have gotten a full fucking Brave Meter right at the start of the battle. And Gilgamesh just goes fucking straight ham on your troops. Okay. But we still won. So we convinced... So Hammurabi explains to him that they weren't... They didn't mean for there to be a war. Even though they, <laughs> we only fought a, a war against them. So... We gained the two uh, legendary heroes. Cool. Enkidu and Gilgamesh. They are... Very good, let me just say that. Okay. So we'll be unlocking their hero, uh, their uh, character events. Thank you, do. And Gilgamesh. <laughs> because, like I explained uh, before, Gilgamesh is a real loot whore. Um, literally. Uh, she, when, when you capture her, her character events involve her arguing a lot by, by a lot I mean a lot with Benkei because as you know Benkei has a thousand weapons on her back because you know that's her quest to find a thousand weapons and uh, because she's found all of those she Benkei's like Benkei's like I have this like I can show you this and Gilgamesh is like no, but can you beat this and then Benkei just pulls out another pulls out a big even bigger weapon it's pretty funny if you read the dialogue but yeah makes sense seeing that they're both loot whores it's like Skyrim all over again. I loot everything. Anyways, let's actually go check out um, our two he our two new hero units. So Gilgamesh and uh, Enkidu both come with a lot of HP, which is very good because obviously there's no um, artificial way you can raise their HP. Uh, Alice started with like six. 6,500, 6,400, something around that, something like that, and, you know, we thought that was a lot, but these two just come with a whole lot more, so, hey, that's great. Uh, Enkidu, uh, has Scratch, Giant Stop, and Wall of Babylon. I don't really know how useful Wall of Babylon is, because it, it's, at, in theory, it sounds awesome, because it says it casts a barrier on one column, right, and it lets it so that all those units who are affected by a Wall of Babylon can tank one attack for any amount of damage. So obviously that's really good in case you know that there's going to be a really big attack coming. But it's five, it's five, what is it? It's five uh, Brave, and it only works once. So I'm not really too sure how effective that is. On, in all honesty, I feel like, you know, uh, who is it? Atlas is Hyper Barrier, or Da Vinci is just Standard Barrier. Anyone else who has a barrier move uh, is a lot better because those effects are actually persistent. They don't go away after you get attacked once and just broken, boom, like that. So, I don't know how useful it is. Obviously, it can come in really clutch whenever you need it, so just just keep that in mind. She also has Giant Stomp, which is kind of weird. So, Gilgamesh, she starts with the same move set that she did when we fought her, so nothing, nothing too weird there. Strong Shot, Nephilim, and Basic Strike. So yeah, that's that. Let's go ahead and do some of their events here. Uh, we can go ahead and do... <laughs> Round number two. So they're in Paris now. And Napoleon <laughs> fills in for Himiko. And she Hammurabi gets speed down. Cool, I guess. It's not like we're really going to use her. The thing is that Hammurabi is actually a really good commander. It's just a, it's just a pity that by, by the time you actually gain her or you can use you know gain her to use her in combat, you have so many other better units in the game uh, that you can use in the game that it's like, well, why even bother by that point, right? Okay, whatever. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and we go this one out. She reminds me of Bismarck. <laughs> so heated. So triggered! Gilgamesh is so triggered. Kappa. Amazing Edge. Okay, I think that's a her... Is that another hero skill? If I'm remembering it right, that should be her hero skill. And yes, Gilgamesh has three fucking hero skills. <laughs> she is broken as fuck. So let's see. Um, let's go down here. Where is it? Gilgamesh. 
Yeah, she has three hero skills. <laughs> Why? Why is this a thing? God. Ilgamesh, please. Okay, we've had a little bit too much fun. But uh, it's, we're, if they invade, we're going to end the video here. And we're going to restart the video because this video is almost 20 minutes long. I can't have that. So we'll be right back.